Normalmente, nós costumamos nos referenciar nos cases de sucesso do marketing. Agora, se tivesse um lugar que traz justamente o contrário, os cases de fracasso. E com vocês, este vai ser o tema abordado hoje. Se um dia inventasse o um museu do marketing, nós teríamos mais cases de fracasso ou de sucesso? Em relação à lembrança, naturalmente nós vamos sempre nos ater mais aos cases de sucesso. Mas se eu pedisse para enumerar alguns cases de que deram errado, vocês lembrariam? Na verdade, para cada produto de sucesso é bem provável que nós tenhamos tido aí desenvolvidos no mínimo nove produtos de fracasso, que eventualmente chegaram ao mercado e rapidamente caíram no esquecimento. Segundo o nosso mestre Peter Drucker, marketing e inovação são as únicas funções de uma empresa. Nós fazemos marketing para sermos competitivos e relevantes para o consumidor e inovamos para nos diferenciarmos dos nossos concorrentes. O novo museu em Helsborg, na Suécia, está se dedicando a criar um catálogo bastante literal dos maiores erros de marketing e inovação da história do mundo moderno. A iniciativa é do psicólogo Samuel West, que vê o Museu dos Erros como algo necessário para o sucesso. E segundo ele, a inovação exige fracasso e aprender o único processo para transformação no sucesso. E com vocês eu deixo na sequência o próprio Samuel mostrando para vocês algum desses cases de fracasso. Hi, my name is Samuel West and I'm the curator of the Museum of Failure. Coca-Cola Black, I don't really know how to say that. Energy drink, it's a mix of Coca-Cola and coffee. Mmm. We've also got the Apple Newton. Everybody thinks Apple is this non-stop uh, success machine. But Apple definitely has their failures. The problem was this handwriting recognition technology didn't work. This failure Big launched a, a line of pens for women. Of course, women can't use pens for men. Big failure. And this is one of my favorites. It's a, it looks like a torture mask. It's actually a mask for a health and beauty. Stimulate your face with electrical shocks. If you use this uh, device 90 days, then you could turn as beautiful as Linda Evans from Dynasty. This is another one of my favorites. It's the QCAT. It's a scanner that you plug into your computer. When this came out, computers were big, bulky, stationary things. Let's say you're reading your favorite magazine and there's an ad for some, some brand. You want to go into that advertiser's website, right? You just scan a code on the, on the printed magazine and up pops the website. This is one of those inventions that should actually never have existed because how difficult is it to type in the website? Come on, people. This is Nokia's N-Gage. Nokia combined the mobile or handheld gaming device with the smartphone and uh, it turned into this. Brilliant technology. The design sucked though. My favorite reason this thing flopped was because to use it as a phone, you had to talk like this. Taco phone. So now it's time for sexy time. Nylon. It was invented by DuPont. It left a, a burner on all weekend by mistake. When he came back to work, instead of throwing it away, he investigated what happened to the plastic it turned into nylon. Legendary Harley Davidson brand, and you make perfume. This didn't go well with the macho crowd, so uh, it was a total flop. So this is Google Glass. Uh, it was a failure because the technology was rather immature, but also because of privacy issues. In the San Francisco area, if you went to a cafe once these were released, there were signs saying, if you're wearing Google Glass, you're not welcome. Nobody likes to be filmed without their knowledge. So the purpose of the museum is to show that innovation requires failure. If we're afraid of failure, then we can't innovate. Another reason I've started the museum is so that I want to encourage organizations to be better at learning from failures, not just ignoring them and pretending they never happened. 